So we instantly has created a record, and that brings me to the next use case, which is archiving your work. You know, utilize those settings, um, those privacy settings, and if you don't want to share it, and you just want to create an archive and make a video public when you're using it again the next year, you can. You can have all of your playlists there, and you can go back to them. So yes, there might be some upfront cost of your time, but you're going to save a lot more time on the back end. So this is a teacher that I found, um, I don't know if he's from Atlanta or just took a trip to Atlanta because he has your assignment from Atlanta. Um, but he's posted all of his presentations, he's gone through the directions on all of his assignments, and now he's created a record for himself, which I think a lot of these are for himself, but also his students can go back and look at. Um, so here's an example of, of a presentation that he did. It looks like he's using Jing, because I see the little yellow circle around the mouse. Um, and it's it just smart. Okay, folks, this is now part two of your notes. And I believe the page that you want to be on as I'm looking through my notes, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. You're going to be on page 12. We're going to do pages 12 to part of 13. So with that, here we go. Okay, we're looking at the roots of George Orwell's animal farm, and now we're going to talk about the fall of Tsarist Russia and the rise of the USSR. And if you start to go through YouTube and look at some of these examples of videos, you're going to find that some teachers will just turn on the screencast software when they're presenting it to their students for the very first time. And so it really actually wouldn't take much effort than just taking that video that you've captured, throwing it up on YouTube. Erasing it from your computer because I know my computer is completely full and I just had to dump all the all the stuff that's on it um, And just have you know YouTube pay for my server costs rather than myself um, The way that I think is going to be the most useful so for somebody like me who teaches content and then specifically um, For math skill based type work is creating some type of YouTube channel um, Where it's a source or a place for your students to go to get information from other teachers So this is where I would put my playlist of five videos um, or four videos about number patterns, they'd be able to go there and see, oh, Mr. Sanders taught us number patterns today, here's all the videos he suggests if you want to dig a little deeper. So I have my history on YouTube channel, and anytime I teach a new unit, I switch over the link and give them access to that new playlist of videos. They can go to my account and see all the playlists if they want to give access to older stuff or see what's coming next. But while we're in a unit, anytime they have some downtime, one of the options for them is to be able to go and play on YouTube and check out different videos. My, my favorite example is a student named Edwin, and we were learning about the Renaissance. And he got really excited about the Medici family. And he went through all of my playlists and then started to go into YouTube and find other examples of this Medici family. And he was bringing in all these insights when I was giving my presentations because he got excited about the topic and went out and did a lot of the work that I didn't even do. Because I didn't have time to watch you know, the 10, 20 videos on the Medici family. I could watch a couple and figure out which ones I wanted to put in my playlist. But he got really geeky about it, was really excited. And he ended up being the teacher for a lot of that because I've created this curated experience as a starting point and he was able to kind of create the path of his own learning. And I think that's really powerful. Um, when I think about YouTube, if you do a search on YouTube and you comma playlist afterwards, you're going to see all the playlists around that topic. And so as teachers, we can do ourselves a big benefit by creating these playlists and then you'll be able to go search um, medieval Japan comma playlist. I don't know if mine will come up, but then you would see the playlist that I've created and then be able to quickly connect with the other playlists that other teachers have created. For the next example, I'm going to talk about what my seventh grade math teacher did and what we set up for him. Um, and through video, you can help struggling students and push advanced students. Um, different videos for different students, we talked about that. But also, students are finishing up early in your classes all the time. So you might have a couple computers dedicated um, to YouTube where you'd be able to go back and sit on, go access to those separate playlists that you've created. Um, or students come into your class missing a lot of those fundamental skills. You'll be able to curate an experience or some type of environment where they can go back in and get that remediation in order to catch up quickly so you're not spending your lunches and recesses working with them individually to catch them up. They can do it on their own time, and you're still teaching the at grade level content. So what Mr. Piazza did is he created his own mini Khan Academy. Because one of my biggest criticisms of that is his voice is no longer the voice of the instructional voice in the classroom. Um, and so by creating his own mini little video archive, he is still the instructional leader. 
you know, he's created these videos. He knows exactly how my students how our students learned about it in sixth and fifth grade, can utilize some of those back background knowledge and incorporate it into his videos. So before the CST, he figured out that his students were in four major groups in terms of ability. So he broke them up and gave them a group name. For here, I just chose different colors. And he gave them each on paper an assignment of videos that they needed to watch. So let's go to his MathCast website. And you can see it's really extensive. And it's all these like weird random codes, which are you know the math objectives based on the California state standards. And he says, OK, these are the different playlists that you need to watch. And they'd look at their little, little check box, and they'd go through. And they would watch a video. And then it's the after video part that I think is pretty cool. Either campers were looking at objectives one B point nine, looking at the distributed property. This is a property that's really important for algebra as we start to solve more complicated equations, which we'll do next year. We're going to start by looking at the poster that you've seen before on the distributed property. And then he can actually go in, and you heard him say it. You can tell him why this is important. You're learning about this next year, or you learned about this last week, versus somebody coming in who can teach you the concept but has no context as to why the student's learning it and their background going in. After each of the videos, what he's created is, is a Google form. But it's not just a Google form because the students go in, they enter their email address, and in the background there's a script that will e automatically grade their stuff, and they can get feedback based on their responses. So if they choose this incorrect answer, he customizes the feedback that comes back to them. So he, there's a tool that I want to turn you on to, and some of you have probably already heard about it, um, but it's Flubberoo. Anybody use Flubberoo? Yeah, it's fantastic. So it was a 20 project um, that a Googler put together, and it basically helps you take all those Google Forms and spreadsheets that, of data you collected and, and run some automatic grading on it. So you can get some feedback rather than having to go through the whole spreadsheet and seeing how they did. So I definitely recommend it. And so he would get a copy of the quiz results, but they would know immediately if they needed to go back and take quiz two, because at the end of each video, he would have the different problems. They could pause it, take the quiz, and then go and submit their answers. So it's like, oh, you have eight out of 10. Go on to quiz two and make sure you get 10 out of 10. One thing that I think is really cool uh, about the, the Khan Academy is the quiz model that he's put in, is you have to get you know, 10 in a row, like master it completely before you can move on to the next video. I think that's really powerful, and it's a, something that we as teachers should have put into our practice. Because it's not necessarily whether or not they do 50 problems. It's whether they can do 10 problems correctly. And once they've hit that 10 mark, like they've mastered it. You know, you don't practice for the sake of practicing. You practice until you get it, and you have that skill. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I'll show you this cool, too, with Loveros. We were using Grade Cam. I don't know if people are familiar with Grade Cam in our school, but we kind of couldn't afford the license, so we had a teacher that just made a template, question one, A, B, C, D, question two, and the kids pulled out their phones and used it basically as an as a answer sheet. And then he'd run the Flubberoo script on that, and then it does item analysis for you, and that's really all grade cam gives you anyway. So it ended up kind of being a poor man's grade cam just using that, which is pretty cool. And that, that, that template's built at all times. Yep. So it, it can be on your blog or whatever, and they pull it up, have their Chromebook out, have their status there, and just Thanks for um, and, and that's the same thing we did at KIPP LA is we created a set of couple scripts that we like to use and then we'd share that, you know, those templates and then just customize it and you can save your teachers a lot of time. Like, sorry for you, you might be the people creating those scripts. Um, but once they are created or you can reach out to other people who have already created them, it's really a real powerful tool. Okay. Um, the other way that I, the only way that I've used the quizzes is to try to help my students on their homework. So only 70% of my students in South Central LA had access to internet at home. And so I would still use the textbook for homework, where I'd assign sections that go home, be able to do the reading. And then, then they would come back in the next day and submit it via a Google form. But I also harnessed the power of YouTube and, and just read the textbook page, page to the students. students. Imitating the Chinese system. Starting with Prince Shoutu, the Japanese rulers adopted new ideas about government from China. And we get our students um, at KIPP typically about two grade levels behind, but sometimes it's a lot more. Um, because the school system and the public school system in LAUSD is broken, broken on, for the large part. Um, 
you know, you have your, your great teachers at like Hollenbeck Middle School, um, but the, we're, we live on islands as great teachers. When I taught in LAUSD, you know, I was on an island in my classroom. And a lot of my students didn't have those fundamental skills, like to be able to read a non grade level text. And so by me reading it, I could go through and explain what different parts meant and stuff. And I, you know, I definitely want to get to a point where he or she is actually reading it independently, but I don't want their reading level to get away and get in, get in the way of them mastering the content. And so that was a, a way for me to, to help those students rather than me sitting next to each of them and reading it aloud. Um, because obviously read aloud is a really powerful tool. Um, the next way is I'm going to show you three different ways to review for exams going from you know, beginning, um, intermediate, and advanced. The first one is the beginning level of reviewing for an exam. I just created flashcards in a pre Google presentation. And I asked the question, and then I gave a pause, and then I answered it. Um, so I'll show you an example. What type of social structure did Japan have during the Japanese Civil Wars when small clans of people were fighting against each other? Just like in Europe, Japan had a society that was based on feudalism at the time, and it was broken up into many small groups, and they were frequently at war with each other, trying to take over different territories. During medieval Japan, who was the person that lived in a fabulous palace where people could come and read, write, wear fancy clothes, play musical instruments? Anybody? Come on. There we go. You got it. <laughs> and that and that's a really simple example. Like I've on my website, I um, have all the flashcards as well, so that they can just go through them on their own time. Um, but the video is kind of a fun way, kick back, relax, and assume uh, his oh history with Sanders. What am I doing? We'll take a look at that in a little bit um, when we have time. The second one is kind of a mini curated experience for your students. Um, let's say I'm teaching um, types of chemical reactions. And I don't want to go through the whole process of creating all of these different videos for them to review chemical reactions. If you look on YouTube, one of, it's the most educational content I found sits in the science, science content area. Um, and there's great videos on all these different types of reactions. So I just wanted to create a simple way to linking it, but I didn't want to create this big playlist. I wanted this to set on my, my home page. And so one of the cool new features um, that you can do in, in YouTube is annotations on top of videos. And I'm going to be working in some of Ramsey's and Jim's session to help you guys create this once you've created your cool content. Use this video to learn more about the different types of chemical reactions. Click on a chemical reaction and watch the video. If you'd like to view another chemical reaction, simply hit the back button and select another chemical reaction. Hi, my name is Chuck Seligman. I teach science at Parsons Junior High School in Redding, California, 8th grade physical science. And I'm going to share with you one of my favorite demonstrations I do for the class to help teach them about single replacement reactions, reactions that are exo. So that's a really simple way, you know, rather than creating a, a four video playlist, um, you've actually created something that looks kind of nice sitting on your website and it's kind of a hub for your students and guide them in their studying. And then the final example is, is my favorite. Um, is and you know what I like okay. about that too is like you're saying you you may you remain the teacher's voice but you bring in other yeah. yep. people so you're the, you're the, the ringmaster yeah so you can you can give them as much setup as you want it's like what should you be looking for in these different videos and that's that's you know definitely the that's why I want to do a level on top of the playlist um, and let's see if we can pull up the last example of ways to review I hope you like this this is fun. All right, let's do some test review where we look at the authority within the Catholic Church. Which of the following members of the Catholic Church have the most authority? Would it be A, the priest, B, the cardinal, or C, the archbishop? That's incorrect. Each priest has an individual church, and there are thousands and thousands of priests in the world. Let's try again. Which of the following members of the Catholic Church have the most authority? We know it's not the priest, so would it be the cardinal, 
or the archbishop. That's correct. The cardinal is second only to the pope. Cardinals are the only people that can elect a new pope when one dies. So this is going, taking video and going from you know, a static consumption one direction to actually requiring the students to think and make decisions and you being there every step of the way to correct any misunderstandings. And I think that's really powerful. So like when I'm working with the other seventh grade teachers in our network, um, for history, like, I would work together to create a set of these questions and for different examples. Me creating them all, like I could do it each video, but probably take me about 20 to 30 minutes though. Um, so it's just presentation slides, quickly capturing my voice, throwing them together, each video having a different link. There's four videos here. Um, and then you have an interactive study experience and you can be right there with them as they, as they study from home. And I think that's really cool.